Hey there, my fellow intellectuals. Today, we're going to be going through a book that is referenced in Feynman's Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman. And he claims it's the book that he essentially learned advanced calculus from. So if you go to page, I believe, 102 here, he says, and I quote, starting on page 101, So every physics class, I paid no attention to what was going on with Pascal's Law or whatever they were doing. I was up in the back with this book, Advanced Calculus by Woods. Bader knew I had studied calculus for the practical man a little bit, so he gave me the real works. It was for a junior or senior course in college. It had Fourier series, bezel functions, determinants, and blah, blah, blah. He goes on about the math. But this is the book that I'm looking at, apparently. It's Advanced Calculus by Woods, 1934. For context, my grandfather, my late grandfather, rest in peace, was born in 1933. So uh, this is a pretty old book. And uh, it is apparently $350, which I will not be adding to my cart, unfortunately, even though it looks like a very nice uh, book to have. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the PDF I found online here. So this is on scribe.com. And we are going to take a look through this book here. And it says here, a course arranged with special reference to the needs of students of applied mathematics. Now, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I did minor in applied math as an undergrad uh, in addition to majoring in physics. So uh, let's see how, how uh, good my skills stack up to this old book. So let's take a look at the contents here. So we got preliminary functions, continuity, the derivative. Okay, that looks all like, you know, standard, like calculus one stuff, you know, indeterminate forms. So you have to use like L'Hopital's rule and stuff. Uh, power series, fun, but they're doing that like right after the preliminary stuff. Okay, sounds rough. Partial differentiation. Okay. Uh, implicit functions, applications to geometry. Okay, that's cool. The definite integral. So five chapters of differential stuff, then finally we get into the integral stuff. And then gamma and beta functions? Jeez, analytic integrals. Okay, so this is looking interesting. So let's go in a bit further. Oh, and I've reached the preview. Oops, Um, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I have the PDF open now in Adobe and we're not gonna have any more preview interruptions. So uh, one thing that's interesting here is in this preface to the new edition here. So they say here, also in chapter six, certain proofs have been made more rigorous, namely that for the existence of the definite integral and that for the possibility of differentiating under the integral sign, a definite integral with upper limit infinity. So this differentiating under the integral sign is a technique that essentially has become known as Feynman's technique, but this is apparently the book that he learned it from. And it's a technique that I didn't really see in college that much, if at all. I think I probably just heard about it and looked it up and was like, mm, that's pretty cool, but I don't think I was ever really made to solve problems with it. So I think that'll be an interesting section to hit because I mean, if we look at all of these sections, there's just, there's just so much. And like, I'm kind of overwhelmed just looking at all of this. I definitely think we should look at the elliptical integrals or the elliptic integrals, sorry. Um, because that's also something that I haven't really ever had to do. I mean, I we've gotten to problems where like, oh, we've got two elliptic integral, we just kind of stop here but never really had to carry out and solve. So here we go, differentiation of a definite integral is 141. So if we go to 141 here, probably will not take me to 141, but we'll see how close we get, 135, pretty close. So um, let's go, let's go down here. Here we go, differentiation of a dif definite integral. Uh-huh, right, so you have some sort of parameter beta, which is constant integration but may vary from different integrals, then by definition of the function, f x of alpha dx is equal to 5 alpha. Right, right, because you've integrated out the x, right, because you're doing the dx part here. This is sort of like in probability where you sort of marginalize uh, variables in a probability integral. Nice graph, phi of a here. And they're doing this integral as an example where you could normally just do like a tangent substitution for a trig substitution, but uh, they're just gonna use differentiation of the integral sign here. This looks like a nasty example. In this case, log 
we would write it today as ln, but uh, that, I guess in the past, you just normally use log. At least whenever I have seen the natural log, they just use ln. And anytime we just we write log, that's usually when we denote a base other than base e. Are they doing multiple integrals? Yeah, they are. Look at that, multiple integrals. Very cool stuff that is very important for any physicist to know. Even though I may a bit rusty. Here we go, a volume integral. Or a triple integral, sorry. Ay ay ay. Exercises. Ooh. Proving stuff. Oh. Oh wait, no, I can prove that. But I'm not gonna do it right now. The proof is left to the viewer as an exercise. Yes, all of this, all these exercises, that is your homework for the next video. I want you to write down all the answers in the comments. Just kidding, don't do that, please. Be too much to read. Um, let's just go down to the elliptic integrals and maybe call it a night because I'm tired, but it has been fun. Ooh, line and surface and space integrals. That's kind of cool. Green's theorem. Oh, oh, nice. Very nice. Green's theorem in the plane. Exact differentials. Oh my gosh, like like thermodynamics. Why am I talking like this? Because I'm really tired, but I don't care. Wow. Independent of the path which means a conservative force if we're talking about forces because, you know, physics is cool too. Math book. And exact differentials, blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is, this is amazing, but I'm a little bit tired out. And here are the spherical coordinates. Oh, how do they define the spherical coordinates though? What is the azimuth? I think they're letting phi vary from zero to pi. So they're saying phi is the azimuth. Wrong! Phi should be the polar angle, even though we've always used beta as the polar angle since we were like in, in you know, middle school. But for physics, you know, we just kind of shake things up. Okay, I think I'm done looking at this section, even though it's kind of fun. Um, though this looks like an integral I should have known how to do a long time ago. Surface integrals, very cool. Vectors, great, love them. Envelope? What's this envelope? Am I getting an envelope full of money? I wish. Being a grad student on a stipend. That could really help. <laughs> uh, and we're going to go to the elliptic integrals now because I want to. I forgot where it was, but it's the last chapter. So, Oh, they have the heat equation? And potential? Whoa, whoa. Things just got way more interesting because physics is now involved, right? Things get way more interesting when physics is involved. Try and disprove me. Legendre polynomials? Oh my goodness, Legendre polynomials, spherical symmetry, assumed, oh my gosh, more spherical symmetry, and is this, these are, uh, are those bezel functions? Yes, they are bezel functions, so is this like cylindrical stuff? I'm going in the opposite order, yeah, right, cylindrical stuff. I know things, guys, I can actually like talk about these things even like half awake, I'm so happy, but look at that horrifyingly complicated differential equation that you're going to have to assume by just knowing the answer because some really smart mathematician in the 17th slash 18th slash 19th century i forgot what century it was just you know guessed the answer and was like name the answer after me like like legendre right or hermit or shebyshev or any of those other polynomials anyways i am just going on let's just get to the elliptic intercourse like I said. And harmonic functions <laughs> sorry they're, they're related to complex variables which is why i'm kind of like Got excited. We still want PDEs, which is kind of cool. Calculus of variations? Like, come on, man. More physics? Like, classical mechanics, man. Let's do it. Let's do some Brachistochrone. Let's do some Snell's Law by some fancy means. Let's just... Let's... And speak of the devil. Complex variables. Did I not read the, the index? I think I probably just, like, skimmed the title. I didn't really read the topics. Because now I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all these sections. Complex numbers i is equal to the square root of minus one i remember the first time i saw that i was just kind of like what how is this possible why is it called i i guess for imaginary but engineers use j why do you do that engineers if you're an engineer please leave a comment tell me why do you use j it makes no sense to me because i is imaginary what is j j imaginary no it's not so okay you know as much as i love complex variables it actually was like my favorite class I took as an applied mathematics minor. 
Um, I think we should just move on and when I say move on I mean stop and gaze at the beauty at the beauty of complex numbers but anyways finally to the point to the topic that I, I wanted to get to the elliptic integrals which I don't really have much intuition about right so any integral of the type p over q where p and q are polynomials may be evaluated by separation into a polynomial and partial fractions there is necessary a new type of integral namely right log x cool so that the integration of the rational function is only possible by aid of a new kind of function the logarithm right so there's this kind of integral tan inverse oh god that looks horrifying r of x and root ax plus b to the nth root oh gosh a quadratic any integral of the type x comma x ax squared plus bx plus c dx for we may write oh wow okay i don't think i really want to get into this right now but these are like all integrals that seem to be done okay let's see here of course particular cases of such integrals may sometimes be valid the integrals like uh you know polynomial third order polynomial and fourth order polynomial are called elliptic integrals and their evaluation requires new functions the elliptic functions oh here we go the first kind okay let's see okay so the first kind is we have like one minus x squared one minus k squared x squared dx squared root of that okay you have it in the numerator and denominator third kind these are Legendre normal forms. In all these cases, it is usual to take k less than one. But why? I want to know what happened. K great. If you have a k greater than one, what happens? Um, probably bad things, right? Let's see here. I just really can't think right now. My brain is just not working at the moment. But this looks interesting. Maybe I should probably just like word this up. Whoa! What is this? SN0, CN0, DN0. Okay, never seen that before. AM, where's PM? <laughs> or FM, you know. Frequency modulated as opposed to amplitude modulated? No one? Okay, I'm gonna drop it now. Stop referencing all the physics, Kyle. We're talking about math right now. Well, I'm sorry, because I can't do math right now. And I'm really tired. That's why I'm talking to myself. I should be talking to you guys. Pendulum. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who said anything about a pendulum? No pendulums unless we do the small angle approximation. That's the. That's got to be the only. Right. Right here. We got to do the small angle approximation. Just give me the negative g divided by l, then approximate sine theta as theta, and then call it a day. But no, they're like. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We got to be very precise. We got to like get the large angle like large angle oscillation not the small angle but the large angle mathematicians are just like <laughs> physicists Taylor expanding your ways into trouble again which you know I don't actually blame them because you know small angle approximation means like theta less than 10 degrees which come on now like 10 degrees that's just like what like this what if I want to know what happens when I do that I mean this way more interesting motion and oscillations aren't that small but the math does get much more complicated Wow, M, M. Okay, okay, a lot of math, a lot of math. Ooh, ooh, series expansion. Just hitting me with all the good stuff right now. But what is this S and C and D? Maybe I should go back and know the definitions. But um, this is just very, 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 just way out of my league at the moment, and I need to sit down with this and actually try to learn it. And please tell me there's not going to be like a contour. Why is there like a contour integral path here? Oh no, don't tell me we're going to do some Cauchy like integral theorem stuff. Not that I don't mind that. I actually like that stuff a lot, but oh, well, you know, the complex plane. Duh. Brain was in the right direction, but did not want to be in that direction anyway. I was like a vector 180 degrees rotated from the direction I wanted to be in. And I'm making all these physics references. Sorry, math. Keep it math, right? <laughs> okay. Wire Strauss. Okay, okay, okay. This is this is getting a bit too much. Um, I hope you have enjoyed sort of touring this book at a, at a ra rather random, you know, selection with me. Um, if you want to keep touring this book in a later video, please leave a comment. Just tell me what sections you want to go over, and I'll 
do my best to go through. I'm not going to do any problems for them because that would take way too long. But uh, I hope you got uh, an idea of what sort of old textbooks, old math textbooks back in 1934 look like written by MIT professors. So uh, without further ado, um, I will be ending this video and uh, leave a comment and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.